Hey guys, I'm Lucas and welcome to K News for week 10, 2017. There are some more busy days ahead with two rocket launches in the upcoming days. But before I jump into that, let me first mention some news for Virgin Galactic. The company, which is known for Spaceship 2 and Launcher 1, is being split into two entities. Virgin Galactic will remain the part shooting humans into space, while Launcher 1 will from now on fly under the new company called Virgin Orbit. My guess is that makes it easier for investors to decide which part they really want to support since both systems target entirely different markets and also hold different risks. The first launch this week will be Europe's Vega. Liftoff is scheduled for March 7th at 1.49 UTC, which is of course Monday evening locally in Kourou. Vega has three solid fuel stages and an upper stage burning hypergolic propellant. This means the fuel ignites all by itself as soon as the two components mix. On top of that is the payload, Sentinel-2B. It has a mass of 1.1 metric tons and is as big as a small car. Following the really quick liftoff, the rocket will turn north and head for a sun-synchronous polar orbit. The first three stages will each burn for around about two minutes before the upper stage will do one of its two burns. As its predecessors, Sentinel-2B is an Earth-observing satellite equipped with an extremely expensive camera. Okay, a camera is a little understatement because it actually has 12 different light sensors, which are each only sensitive to a small portion of light. Here a little comparison between our eyes and Sentinel. Every bump is a distinct sensor, which sensitivity peaks at a certain wavelength. The images of the blue, green and red sensors can of course be combined to get a normal color picture. To give another example, water vapor shines in infrared light at roughly 1000 nanometers. When I remember correctly, such vapor, including visible clouds, is actually the strongest greenhouse gas in our atmosphere, so there can be learned a lot about our climate from that alone. The satellite will be placed in the same orbit as its twin Sentinel-2A, which was launched back in 2015, just on the opposite side. The second launch this week will be a Falcon 9 again. However, it's scheduled for Sunday morning UTC or Saturday night if you live in the US. A delay would therefore push it to next week, which is not so unlikely. This launch will be a little different because Falcon will take off in its expandable setup. Its payload Echo Star 23 is on the edge mass-wise of what a reusable Falcon 9 can shoot into a geosynchronous transfer orbit. I'm not 100% sure at this point, but at least this should mean Falcon 9 will have no landing legs attached since they are not necessary. However, they could still mount them to test how the rocket would behave when re-entering with unfolded landing legs. Or at least I would really want to see that, but it probably won't happen. As mentioned, the rocket will shoot its payload to a geosynchronous transfer orbit, which means it will head east in a rather acute angle. The flatter trajectory allows the first stage to contribute more to the horizontal speed, which this launch will be all about. A little over two minutes into the flight, the second stage will separate from the booster and go on with its mission. The booster itself will meanwhile plummet back to ground and splash down in the ocean fatally. This might be the last time we see an expandable Falcon 9 because it will receive an upgrade by the end of the year to handle that kind of payload. Much more demanding payload, which would require an expandable rocket, will soon hopefully be launched using a reusable Falcon Heavy. But even a Falcon Heavy has its limits and shooting a heavy payload to Mars, for example, would lead to at least one expandable core booster. The SpaceX website states an expandable Falcon Heavy could lift 52 tons to Earth orbit, but that is of course only a figure to compare to other rockets. At least at this point there is no way to mount 52 tons on the upper stage. Echo Star 23 will join the Echo Star fleet at 45 degrees west over South America after it was tested on a different position. The company itself does not directly sell TV broadcast services and instead leases its capabilities to others. In the case of Echo Star 23, it will focus on Brazil, but I'm not sure who the final contractors will be. Having performed its final burn, Falcon's upper stage will release the satellite, which will from there go on with its mission. Since such a transfer orbit is elliptical, it will have to circleize it using its own engines, which will take several weeks. Now in the end, a big shout out to my patrons who support me on Patreon. Thanks a lot and if you want to contribute as well, simply follow the link in the description or in the end of the video. Okay. That's it for this week and I hope to see you next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.